Hi, I just want to talk about using the Solasta Crown of the Magister uh, Dungeon Maker. And some, I'm going to talk about actually editing the JSON files of your campaign so that you can maybe reproduce some content quickly. And um, I'll just show you that process. But first, I want to also introduce you to the fact that you should be on the Discord. That Solasta Crown of the Magister has a Discord channel. I uh, don't know why I was looking for Joel Olstein. Uh, <laughs> reading up on prosperity gospel, totally different subject matter. But if you want to find how to get on that subreddit, or not subreddit, but go to the subreddit. I think it's called Crown of the Magister. Solasta Crown of the Magister. Here, let's go to Solasta. They got to redirect your Crown of the Magister. Is it? So once you're on Crown of the Magister, uh, you can find a link from this subreddit that'll take you to the Discord. I have no idea how, you know, off the top of my head. You can just ask for it <laughs> if you really need to, but you can also search. Somewhere in here is a link to this Discord, um, and I highly recommend it. It's the last stuff. And there's a lot of great helpful stuff in here. Uh, not only just people chatting about the game, but people also talking about the Dungeon Maker. Okay, so in the Dungeon Maker, you can you know, edit and manipulate a campaign. And it ultimately generates a save file that is in the JSON format. The JSON format is a pretty common internet um, storage. I don't know, it's just, it's, it's how JavaScript saves data very often. And now it's become very useful for a lot of languages. So video games now save stuff in JSON. Languages that have nothing to do with JavaScript use JSON. Um, but if, you know, if you end up looking at a location, for example, you know this has a map that renders, and ultimately there is a in the JSON. It's a bunch of coordinates that correlate to what they call rooms that have objects in them. That you know this ID of the object stump B ties it to this graphic, and it also has a position X Y that it helps build the map. This is all stuff that you probably you know you'd expect. You encode you add information when you push stuff around a map, you add X, Y information to it. And of course you expect it to be saved somewhere. You have a lot of custom items. Really, I find it, it's the maps that I find the most useful. For example, I have here, um, what the fuck? Happy Town, I have Happy Town at War. And then here is another one, Happy Town Assault. So this is a pretty nice trick. This is a really good strategy for showing uh, a landscape evolve over time. And this is my strategy for it. Go ahead and close. When you get a 13 megabyte campaign, everything gets a little bit slower, I've noticed. Do, do, do. Okay, so um, if you highlight your campaign that you're working on, you can go browse files. So here, let's go ahead and start by making backups, right? We're gonna copy that. I put one backup in here. Well, what is today's date? I don't know, 4.12 or something. Let's put the old one in there. It's not 4.12. So backed up the first one, 13, 14 megabytes now. Uh, I'll go ahead and also copy it to my desktop just because been my habit lately. Um, one thing that is not great, I've noticed is like, if I open up Solasta on another computer, I have never observed it to synchronize my dungeon, my custom dungeons. Um, so that's not cool. Uh, but you know, I, uh, I also periodically and pretty routinely push it to Steam, my changes to Steam so that, um, it at least lives on in the cloud in case everything dies on my local machine. So I'm going to open this with my text editor that I'm currently using, Sublime. I'm sure it's going to complain about my license. Sublime's pretty good. It's not as robust as like any other IDs. Using a text editor like Sublime is somewhere between Nano slash Vim and then an IDE. Sublime offers like code and syntax highlighting, but nothing robust in terms of uh, tree browsing and 
I don't know, none of the fancy stuff that IDEs provide. Uh, but it is a good, just solid text editor, which is a nice virtue in its own right. So when you open this file up and it's 14 megabytes, you should know that text editors almost always do their RAM organization strategies based on carriage returns in a text file. So when you have 14 megabytes with no carriage returns, text editors do tend to struggle. But because this is a valid JSON file, pretty easy to actually add carriage returns. I just controlled A, control C to copy. I'm gonna go find my web browser. Uh, and I'm gonna look for JSON, Utifier. And the main thing that this is gonna do is it's gonna add carriage returns in a JSON valid manner. I hit validate, but it also automatically indents. Now it takes a bit because it's 14 megabytes. 14 megabytes is nothing to a computer that has like 32 gigabytes of RAM. But the problem is that only, they don't expect 14 megabytes to be transferred via copy and paste. Um, so there's usually just like one data point of entry that it enters the process. Uh, so that's why it takes a second, but okay, it's done. Now I'm gonna control A again. Now a web browser, a web browser's text area field is just also going to struggle with 14 megabytes. Come on, quit being slow. Control A, Control C to copy it all. Control C like 30 times. Okay, back over here. I'm going to delete this line. I have my backup. It just goes haywire. So I pasted it. Save it. Control S. Okay, now that you saved it, and now that you pasted it, and now that there's a bunch of carriage returns, the text editor is able to work with it a lot more effectively. You're able to work with it more effectively um, because you can scroll and you don't have to go search through the line endings. Um, <clears throat> okay, and so let's do something. Um, there's a city I got called Crater Valley, I think. Crater Valley City. So uh, this is the ID I have of it, the internal name as they call it. And then this is the label or external displayed title. I'm gonna go find that location. You can, you'll, you'll tell it's right here. It says this content type is a user location and it has this title. And this title is um, fundamentally the ID, the unique ID of the location. So let's go open it up in Celasta. Um, it, Celasta had it in cache. So because it detected that I hadn't done anything to the save game, I hadn't saved it yet. It had already had loaded it into its own local cache. And that's why it quickly popped it up. It's important to know when Celasta is using cache because I honestly do have to quit Celasta. Um, about every two to three hours and then restart the application. Um, and maybe it's because my campaign has gotten so large. So I got this um, this town, Clay Orc Crater Valley. You can see here it's one of many. It's, it's just got some city stuff, right? Okay, close. Um, good, close. It's a good idea not to have multiple instances of a file you're editing open. And I would say that this is have the equivalent of that, having this campaign editor open. You want to close it while you're editing the file in some text editor. All right, now back to the text editor. So we got Clay Orc Valley. I'm going to, this object, everything that's ensconed inside this bracket from here down, it's pretty far down there. I can just hit this little carrot and it shrinks. Right, so now all I have to do is that effectively copied all, uh, what, 4,000 lines, 3,500 lines of that. And I hit control C to copy it. Okay, now I go after it, hit enter, control V, I paste. Let me scroll down a little. Okay, so I'm in line, but now what I have to do is I have to scroll all the way back up and make sure I have a new title. It has to have a new title, a unique title. Okay, it was around 37, 637 was the start of the new one. What's going on here? Is 
So you scroll up <laughs> and you scroll up forever. Okay, we're not even to seven, so I don't know why. I'm slowing down. Okay, here we are. Somewhere around here, entrance one, merchant six. You know, you'll be able to tell that you're at the top uh, because of the tabbing structure that is baked into how this is done. So you see, when I pasted it, it pasted too many tabs. Clear out those. Now I have to give it a unique title. At war. Uh, control S, I save it. I save it in my keyboard work. There we go. So in Sublime, Need to update it, don't I? And register it. In Sublime, you can do that useful sort of open and close, and it'll close whole objects that are you know defined by the bracket structure that surrounds them. The tabbing is not essential in the definition of JSON, but it is very helpful for reading it. Um, so anyway, I created a new title, I saved it. That's really all you need to do I'm going to quit Celasta. I'm going to reopen Celasta. Crown of the Magister. These guys have a lot of saliva. All right, here we go. So now we're in the Dungeon Maker again. Tomb of Doom. Edit. All right, here we go. So Clay Orc Crater Valley at War. The nice double click. The UI responds, and here we have it. This is at war. And so now we could actually just change stuff. You know, instead of a building there, what we got is um, debris with some sort of fire. I don't know if the cities have fire, actually. Okay, here, here we go. All right, so this way you can, like, you know, have places change over time. One thing I would warn you about is that your merchants. Their inventory does not propagate across maps. So any one merchant and their selection of inventory only exists on the one map that they're put on. So maybe you might actually make your merchant area separated from your cities in a certain way, maybe like a store people walk in. So the city around them can change, but you keep your merchants and their inventories going. Um, I like to do that. I don't always succeed, but I like to do that because sometimes players might sell an important, uh, uh, what do you call it, just a quest item, even though it's not enforced as a quest item like it is in the main campaign, you might need the quest item in order to achieve some goal. I like the players to be able to buy back the item, and so I like to keep my merchants kind of floating independently of the changes of the environment around them when possible. Some merchants are there for plot, though, and uh, if players sell something important to them, I can't undo that. Um, Okay, so that is how I edited the JSON file in order to double the location, duplicate a location. And uh, let's go ahead and save. It's actually faster to exit by saving than it is to try to exit without saving it. Let me show you some other stuff maybe. No, we're gonna leave it at that. Um, but you can edit that JSON file in some more robust manners. Like what I have a, uh, actually I'll show you my website. This is one thing I built that is a tool. Um, yeah, it's one of these, it's the last the copy editor. What you do is you upload your campaign file and what it does is it'll go through and you can open it up. It'll show you all the blocks that have text And what I do is I have a spell checker and a grammar checker that are turned on, or it's not turned on now with their plugins for my uh, Firefox web browser. 
And through this method, I can actually go through and um, actually, you know what, I'll show you one last thing I like to do with my, uh, with my JSON editor because I've been meaning to do this and this is the perfect time to show you. Close. It takes a second to close when it's 14 something megabytes. Do 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 do. All right, so where are we? We're going back. Uh, we're just gonna quit. Um, so what I would normally do with my copy editor is I'd actually go through and have it highlight red spelling errors, so that um, and I can also there was some option that made these all open simultaneously. But as my campaign became so large, I realized that this tool. Um, it would crush your web browser trying to check so many things simultaneously. Um, so then I, I think there's some way that makes it easier to set it up so that um, they all open up at once, something like that. Here we go. So like, oh my gosh. All right, it's helpful to know what area to go look in when you use this as a spell checker, inflammable. Is that not a word? Pretty sure that's a word. It's supposed to be an I? Oh my gosh. And two M's. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I will use it. This is what I made this tool to do. Help me find my spelling errors. All right, so I'm gonna download it. It's gonna go to my downloads folder. that seem right? Now why is it 13.8 megabytes according to that readout? Anyway, that wasn't really what I was going to do. What I was going to do is come here. We're going to go back. We're going to reopen our campaign. Now I'm going to show you how to do a replace all so you can change all text of a certain type simultaneously. So I wasn't happy with the name Ponda. I don't know, I just started, I wasn't the syllables, they just never became sonorous to me. So I want to rename the city. Unfortunately, the city's name shows up in a lot of places, right? And then how do I check it all on every single situation that comes up? All right, so I'm gonna go through the same process. Control A, select it all. Control C, copy it. Go find my JSON beautifier. Control A, delete it all. Control B, paste it all. By the way, can you tell I'm a real software engineer? I do a lot of control, copy, and pasting. In fact, that might be the most powerful way I use the AIs, and I definitely do incorporate the AIs into my daily work um, using. Uh, Copilot. I do like Copilot. I like Copilot because um, I'm always having to hit the backspace to make deletions of my fat finger mistakes, as I call them, clumsy finger typing. And it's so frustrating when I move slowly because of that. And uh, <laughs> that alone, uh, Copilot has like eliminated my worst like typing blunders. Okay, so we paste it in. We're gonna save it. All right, um, now that it's saved, and again, it has the, the carriage returns. That's what is having a, you know, an end of line is classically called a carriage return. So I'm gonna look for that city name, Pond. Uh, oh my gosh. Sign Ponzanui, Pondon. But do I use that in a lot of places? 12 matches. Okay. Um, first steps. We're going to change Ponda across the board. Go up to. Uh, Where am I looking? Find, sorry. 
find, replace, control H. So for every Ponda, I want to put in something much prettier. Uh, and you'll notice that there's double quotes around the string Ponda. So that means we can use a single quote, Dilitha. No, it's, that's not like straight out of the lithium. Okay. Sonorous syllables strung together. I just got nothing. <laughs> hmm. Uh, Panace Bebebo That's Verisia. Uh, there. That sounds like it's kind of like the palace in France, but somehow it's definitely not the palace in France. I don't know. It's appropriate fantasy city name. Unlike Ponda, which rhymes with Honda, ver, ver, nobody can pronounce that. It's perfect. So it replaced all, which is great because it's also going to replace that string where it shows up inside um, unique identifiers that link the uh, objects together. That makes it very valuable. So let's go ahead and also look for Panda. Uh, okay. Ironically, I think this is all in the newspaper, and a newspaper does have sometimes their own unique spellings, especially as a brand name. Oh, I forgot. It was that city's actually named Sign Panda. But still, nobody's going to know what that is. All right, so. Um, all right, let me just, we'll take a quick look at um, all the instances of Panda and make sure it's just something I can change without much fear. Come on, all the way back, guys. Yeah, okay, it looks like I can just change this, so we're gonna go with Control H. Panda is now also Vericia. Yeah, okay. Sign Vericia. Perfect. We're gonna do Control S to save. Okay, we're still quit from. Still quit it from Celesta. Oh yeah, I should have changed in flammable while I had the chance. I didn't want to, um, I hadn't worked with my copy editing tool in a little while, so I just was like, ah. And it seemed like it was skinnier, like the file I got back was missing 400 kilobytes. So I was just like, I don't know what's up with that. Um, but I, I'm pretty sure it does work. It's just like, as a software engineer, I'm telling you that if you haven't tested it in the last like two days, you shouldn't just go out on a limb and say it works. <laughs> you gotta test it first. Um, all right, so what did I just do? We changed a place called Ponda to Vericia. Yeah, look, see right there, it was Ponda, now it's Vericia. Much more, I don't know, prettier name, much more pretty, much done prettier. Uh, okay, and I'll wrap up this conversation with that. Let's just open the maps. That's the ultimate proof that this stuff isn't you know, garbage that the editor can still interpret the information that we put in there. So one of the empowering things to know and take away from this is that you can take your JSON file of your campaign and put it in a beautifier and have it add a bunch of carriage returns and you paste it back into your campaign save thing um, and it works and it's a lot easier to manipulate once you add those carriage returns. Um, and you can additionally programmatically manipulate this stuff I mean I did at some point you guys got to get bored of this video and I got to get you know got to stop talking um, because you want to work with it programmatically you could I would normally recommend making like a node app but obviously I made a standalone web editor app this is a pretty plain Jane thing um, GitHub. who am I 
what am I looking for? I don't even remember. Something, 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 something to do with. Where's my repos? Copy editor. Anyway, this isn't a particularly fancy website. This is actually more vanilla than you might realize. What it does is it has a very conventional text area, which is where you can place copy and paste large blobs of text. And then it reads that text as a JSON. Um, and it JSON being the native language of JavaScript easily renders it as a bunch of like HTML elements in React. So this uses React. Um, and then that allows you to work with it in that GUI format. And then it re it just applies any changes you make to the text area and then um, applies it to that JSON and then downloads it as a blob to your computer. Uh, you can go here and find everything you need to know about working with Celasta campaign files inside a web page. This is pretty nice because instead of having a server running in perpetuity, you just have all the computational work in your web browser, not on a server, it's in your web browser. That's pretty cool. So you don't actually, like when you paste your text in that text area, it doesn't travel anywhere. Your web browser just begins to work with it. Um, and yeah, it shows the flexibility of a web browser. So, um, Gosh, where was I going with this? Sorry, I'm talking so much. Okay, so if you control A and you select all your JSON, um, if you look, if you open up like a console editor, this is the laziest and fastest way to get to a JavaScript uh, console interface. You can declare like a variable campaign. Let me just paste it in there. Dun, 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 dun. Is it pasting forever? Uh-oh, I hit control V twice. This could be a problem. Hitting it twice was the problem. One day I'll have a much faster computer. All right, so maybe this isn't as easy as it was. You know, I used to only have like nine megabytes of campaign files. Um, come on, Firefox, you can do this. All right, so I'm gonna give up on this process. Close the program, don't even bother. Okay, it didn't kill the recording, that's nice. Here, go ahead and try that again. Should work. Yes, go away, everything. Fonts campaign, control V. So it's actually control V in right now. Let's see if it ever finishes. This time I only hit it once. All right, this is killing me. It's taking forever. Okay, so I might have overestimated the ability for you to copy and paste 14 megabytes of JSON into a console. Um, that's too bad. We'll go ahead and wrap up this recording. Um, <clears throat> there are ways though, you can easily just interpret this with JavaScript or any other language that you're familiar with because it is JSON and it's organized in a logically sound JSON manner 
Um, you have a series of IDs, unique identifiers. You have to honor those. Um, but I think over time, it should become somewhat obvious to people that use it, like what are the unique identifiers. So I'll go ahead and wrap up. And uh, hopefully Firefox one day comes back to life. 14 megabytes in the console, I guess it's just too much for it. Let's see if Chrome actually handles it. Just out of curiosity. I don't particularly like Chrome. I do like Firefox. And the use case of copying and pasting 14 megabytes is pretty rare. So I definitely wouldn't. If Chrome does this well, I still wouldn't say Chrome is good. Okay, it showed up. I hit return. Let's see what happens. It is certainly taking its time. Did it do something? I'm so confused. <laughs> it just cracked. It died. Okay, so it just died. It died on its own. Um, let's see what Teams does. Uh, not Teams, literally. Let's see if the console with real activity dies. Control B. Hit enter. Okay, it's frozen. Now, I'm not surprised it's frozen. I'm just surprised it died before it tried to finish. Um, I'm sure that Firefox might have actually resolved itself after some amount of time. But obviously, if it dies, it won't ever resolve. Um, and the problem with this is because copy and paste writes information basically one byte at a time. <laughs> so it takes time and then there's a timeout on how long it accepts a copy and paste operation. And I guess we're running into that wall, um, that copy and paste timeout of, yeah, transferring, I guess, what are probably arrays of unsigned integers. Uh, okay, I'm gonna talk, stop talking. And uh, so that was editing Celasta's campaigns, editing them as JSON and taking advantage of that so you can duplicate areas change names across your whole campaign simultaneously um, and then yeah like I said duplicate areas so you can show them change over time anyway I'll talk to you later bye